Turn Abar is the co-founder and chief executive officer of Purposeful. Turn is a feminist activist who has dedicated his life to amplifying the voices of girls and young people across the globe and in Sierra Leone. At age 15, Turner founded the Children's Forum Network. He went on to lead initiatives for UNFPA, Nike Foundation, CRS, and recently at the Population Council. In 2012, he co-founded, alongside Gordon Brown, former British Prime Minister, A World at School, a global mobilization and campaign organization for global education. Turner has twice been appointed by the United Nations Secretary General to high-level steering committees and is an expert advisor to the Secretary Council of Youth, Peace and Security. In 2018, he was appointed by the UNICEF Executive Director to the International Task Force. Turner has spoken at the White House under President Obama, introduced the First Lady at the UN General Assembly, spoken at the European Union, African Union and the World Bank, and lectured at universities around the world. COVID is real. Welcome to Real Talk with Aline TV Show. I am your host, Aline Kista. I'll be right back after this. Let's watch the real talk with Aline TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Aline Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with Aline TV show. Today I have with me Cherunoba, aka Kanike Bobo, <laughs> the CEO for Purposeful. Help me welcome Cherunoba. What's up, Cherno? What's good? It's good, good. I mean, I'm cool. I'm really glad. Cool? I'm really glad to be here, by the way. I'm a big fan of this show. Thank you. And I see now I'm a big fan of yours as well. And I heard so. you're making all the money in the country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these people have been telling tales, huh? Ah, I did my research. <laughs> I know what's going on. Um, let's start with you. I mean, I've read all this big profiles introducing the first lady, speaking where Obama is. Hmm. All of that, you know, collaborating with the prime minister. I want to yeah. be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of capable. Yes. Cheering about. Yes. Let's talk about your childhood. How was it like growing up? I go by the name Kani Kibobo <laughs> uh, for a reason because I like to tell people it reminds me of where I'm from. Okay. I was born in Kaniki. I was actually born in what you call in Sierra Leone a palm body bathroom. My mom really? went to use the bathroom and then then. I made a glorious entrance into the world. Pamboy, Pamboy bathroom. <laughs> Inside the Pamboy bathroom, in a pit, pit toilet just that next come to up. That's exactly <laughs> where I came out. Um, another way to think about it is I couldn't wait. I'm almost on my way actually to go to the cottage. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I've always been in a hurry. I want to get things done pretty fast. And okay. so I came out. But, you know, raised by a single mom okay. with two sisters. Mm -hmm. As you know, our childhood in this country too was defined by conflict being displaced, being refugee. Okay. So growing up for me, the, the thing is, though, I didn't know I was poor. You know, it's funny, because if you're poor and you're living in a poor neighborhood, you don't realize you what don't poverty realize because is. Because you were happy. Yeah, I was a happy kid. My mom is there, my sisters are there, we're playing. And you start realizing you're poor when you step out of your home. And maybe you go to school sometimes, and at a certain age, you start realizing that, wait, I've been wearing the same uniform since. I've been holding the same, same bag. bag. You know, same we, used to, we used to have these raffia bags. You know? <laughs> Fisherman bag, you know. fisherman bag Kaya, yeah, but you know, one word, man, why you coat less properly and you know, just carry yourself. But I always say, my mom, mm -hmm. who is my shiro, who I think is the most remarkable woman in the world, okay. just next to you. Oh, um, cool. I, my, my mom, you know, just brought us up with certain ethos and values, and, and the most important one is about value in education, believing in that our ticket out of poverty, Is out of it? conflict, was education. Oh, and cool. so while I was born in poverty and I grew up poor, I understand that I grew up with a lot of privilege because to, to be raised by just an educated mom, and now I work in education, so I know the data. Mm -hmm. If your mom is educated, it makes a massive difference for your life outcome, oh. no matter who you are. So just because your mom can read and write, can take you to the hospital, can help you do your homework, that is a very important predictor. So I'm aware that that gave me a privilege mm -hmm. and I've been able to use that throughout my life as well. Which is really important. Yeah. What was your dad? Good question. I'm <laughs> sure if he's looking at this, he's thinking to himself, why is this guy never talking about me? A lot of people ask me that, by the way. I love my dad. He's a great guy. Hey, um, 
you know, they were separated. They were separated right. very early when, after you. we were born. So my mom raised me. And then at some point later in life, in teenage years, they came back together. But, you know, my childhood experience, if I talk about my childhood, it was really just dominated by my mom because I watched her. She's a primary school teacher. She taught in class one. Okay. Uh, we sold all kinds of things. You know, my don't, you know, sell sweets, oh. untu, <laughs> you know, go to the market. We had a chop box that we sell from, you know, those box in the little corner where you sell matches, cigarettes and all that stuff. Really? We did that. Everything to survive. You go to school, come back, you sell, you make some money, you, you do your dry rice and pepe and you eat. But a lot of also pride in ourselves, you know. Mom taught us things like not just believe in education, but believing in yourself, in having self-respect. Which is important. You know, my mom always said, you're not better than anybody, but nobody's better than you. So no matter what, you know, like what they eat for breakfast or whatever, when you're in school, it's the same thing you're all being taught. And so that's kind of how I believed in myself and I started... Um, She's you know, doing just, things. just giving them. Like you say, you were in a hurry to come yeah, to the yeah, world, yeah. so you do it's, everything. Just trying to get it done, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Cherno, um, you're a feminist activist, yeah. which is really good. But for the ones that are looking at me right now, you know, that don't understand what a feminist is, can you elaborate who's a feminist? It's great. I love that question because <laughs> a lot of people ask me about that all the time. Okay. A feminist is somebody who believes in the radical notion that women are human beings. Okay and that ought to be treated with the exact same respect mm -hmm. and fullness of dignity that you treat men. And I know a lot of people say, oh yeah, I also believe in it. But being a feminist is an action word. Okay. It's not just what you believe, it's what you do. You have to embody your feminist values mm -hmm. in how you show up, in what you say, in what you share, in your daily lives. It, it's a way of being. It's not just, oh, oh yeah, I believe in women, but. but. I always say to people, as soon as you say but, you're undermining your own feminist principles. Okay. There are no buts to this. Mm -hmm. It's a total commitment. It's this notion that, you know, look, I believe that you're a full human being, and therefore, I take a dim view to anybody that will want to treat you, talk to you, approach you in any way that is demeaning or less than they will a man. So okay. in my words that I use, in the way I carry myself, you know, I treat uh, myself at home, my wife, my kids, in the examples I set, in the groups that I am, a feminist is a lifestyle. It's a way of being that comes from this radical notion that men and women are equal human beings and ought to be treated the same way. And that's it for you. So why are you Easy a feminist? Easy peasy. Because why not? As I said, I was <laughs> raised by my mom, okay. uh, two sisters. And, and I always talk about my feminist values from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. One is I hate poverty. You know, I call myself kind of capable and I tell people, mm -hmm. make no mistake, I do not glorify poverty. My ambition right. is not to come here and say, oh, being poor is good. It's oh, good. my God, I hate it. When I think back about it, mm -hmm. I don't want my kids to, to grow up in the kind of poverty that I grew up in. I have been poor before. Luckily for Sierra Leone, or pretty much anywhere else in the world, I don't think you'll consider me a poor person anymore. But, but I, I understand that total emancipation is not just that I am no longer poor, mm -hmm. but that everybody that grew up in Kanike, in the slums that I grew up in, in other communities, should also have access to the same opportunities that I have and to come out of the squalor that poverty forces you to live in. So being feminist, I know that the tool to change our society from being a poor, deprived society mm -hmm. to an empowered society is when women are empowered. Over half of the population are women. And we've seen countless studies show that if you invest in women and women are empowered, as I said, mm -hmm. just outcome in your kid's life. If a girl goes to school and completes, even if she has a kid, a kid has a better chance in life. Yes. So if you want to end poverty, full stop, you need to invest in women, in you need women. to believe in feminism. Two, if you believe in justice, the thing that moves me now, the activist part of me, mm -hmm. I, I get to teach a lot of young people or, or, or mentor them and I say, to be an activist, Eleni, is to have something that makes you angry, something that moves you, something that you look at and be like, this is just not right. You know, you see some idiots just slapping their wife at home or beating up people. And you think, this is simply not, not right. right. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, 
I'm driven to be a feminist because I simply don't think it's right to think that my sister is a less human being than I am, that my mom ought to be treated less than I, I am or my dad is. Mm -hmm. And I look at women like you and I think, actually, if more and more girls in this society can be like you, we'll be less poor and we'll just be a better country. So it's in my interest to be a feminist because when women are liberated, we all are. Yes, definitely. And I agree. For me, it's all about the women. It's not because I'm a girl, but it's just that it is what it is. And yeah. I agree with you. Um, so from being a kind of capable, let me go straight to you being in a room to, you know, talking with Obama or introducing the first lady. That minute, that feeling, how was it like? Um, I've been very, very blessed in my life. I've been in these positions many times. Actually, the first U.S. president I met was George Bush. When, as a kid, I went to, to the U.K. to speak to members of parliament. In the U.K., I had an opportunity to address the U.K. parliament. Mm -hmm. But obviously, the thing that I put on my CV that I'm most proud of is being invited to the White House by President Obama. It's yes, introducing, the first black president. Of course. It's introducing <laughs> uh, Michelle Obama or being mm -hmm. in the U.N. in front of world leaders and all. The feeling is um, humility and being overwhelmed with just grace and be every time i say i i either go into the bathroom or something i give my mom a call i shed a little tear Aww. i think about how what a journey we've been in i pinch myself sometimes and just remind yourself that this is real but for me it's also what keeps me humble okay because I ne that's why I call myself kind of capable. Mm -hmm. I never want to forget where I'm from. Where from? No matter how high I go, how much money I make, mm -hmm. I want to remember who I am. Yeah. I'm still that boy from Kaneke. My friends are still my friends. I'm not better than anybody, but nobody's no better, better than, than me. You. I like that. And that is very, very important. <laughs> right. The way. So those moments are, you know, they, in, they fuel you, they fill you with pride. You think, well, I've done some things right in my life to be at this table. I think Chino yeah. Achebe says if you wash your hands, you'll be... Uh, you eat with kings, mm -hmm. and I have had the privilege to eat with kings. All right. And I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back after this. Let's watch the real talk with Eileen TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with the Lean TV show catches every week on AYV, Star Plus TV, FTN, Afri Radio, and 98.1. If you just walked in, I have Charon about the Chief Executive Officer of Purposeful. We've talked about, you know, he's growing up and all the big things that he's doing. However, I'm curious to know about Purposeful, and that's exactly why he's here. Because I know he's dealing with girls, he's a feminist activist, and we need that in this country. So definitely, we're going to talk about it. Let's go and talk about um, Purposeful. Why the name Purposeful? Ah, good I question. like that. It's cute. Yes. Like, it was really cute. The first time I heard it, I was like, Purposeful. I know. I'm trying to think in my head, like, why Purposeful? Before yeah. I actually met you and I kind of understood yeah. what you were doing. We stumbled on the name. I, I tell you, when we started, we, we were thinking about, you know, what, what are we going to call this? Mm -hmm. um, purposeful is a critique of the international aid system. Okay. You know? As you said, you've read, I've, I've worked for the UN, I've worked for, you know, many international NGOs. I've sat on multiple boards, mm -hmm. um, private sector, international organizations. And my co-founders and I, we were frustrated with many things that were happening in these NGOs, in the UN system. And we thought, and at some point we thought, well, we can continue to criticize it or we can create something that is better or that we believe will be better than right. what the system is. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems we had is pe the, the world was not treating the issues of girls with purpose, with intentionality. Oh. It was not solving the problems deliberately. Mm -hmm. It felt like for issues, for solutions for girls, mm -hmm. they were wrapped up in other solutions. Okay. So a purposeful, we say, children is not equal to girls. Youth is not Thank equal to too. girls. Gender is not equal to girls because right. it's, these are all big concepts mm -hmm. that end up still making it difficult for girls to access the tools and the resources that they need mm -hmm. for them to thrive. So in that conversation, we said, oh, we need to be more intentional. Let's do it in a very mindful way. 
And then we landed on, oh, yeah, purposeful. purposeful. Let us be purposeful about it. And it's really nice. Thank you. So what exactly does purposeful do? I know you deal with women, girls. Yes, girls. girls. Yeah. See, women, it's not girls. Girls. Girls, okay. Yes, exactly. So what does purposeful do for girls? So purposeful, we exist to remake the world with and for girls. Okay. We are a feminist movement building hub determined to support girls and their allies with what they need to recreate the world for themselves. And we do this through different means. One, we redistribute power. Every work we do at Purposeful, we center power. Because we believe that it's the patriarchal power system that oppresses and holds particularly girls behind. And obviously girls are the people that become women. And we mm -hmm. think if you want to change the reality of females, you have to start with intentionally investing in girls. Because if you wait until um, the girls have become women, oftentimes the things that happen to them are irreversible. If a girl is pregnant, if a girl gets married, if a girl is a victim of FGM, you can never shift those things again. Mm -hmm. If she drops out of school and you're waiting when she's a woman and then you come with microcredit, you're only cosmetizing the problem. You're not solving the problem. Mm -hmm. So how do we solve the problem? We have a, a, a four major pillars of our work. One is about, as I said, redistributing power, which means just money. Okay. So Purposeful, we're, we're a funder. We're very proud to be the first Africa-based global fund for girls. Oh. So we're based in Sierra Leone, but we fund in over 70 countries. Really? We give, yes, we fund even in the US and in the UK. We're very, very proud of that. We started in Sierra Leone, we're headquartered here, but we have offices around the world. And we provide resources to girls, formal and informal groups and girls allies so young women you have to be over 30 the leader of your organization have to be 30 years and below mm -hmm. and your work has to be entirely focused on girls and we believe money is power the reason why girls typically uh, you know go through the challenges that they go through the problems that they have it's oftentimes money. it's money it comes down yeah, to that money so our purposeful we want to remove the barriers that girls typically have in terms of having access to resources mm -hmm. and give them money. And many people ask us, oh, is it not risky? We say girls are absolutely worth the risk. We believe it's worthy to give girls money and, you know, and let them use that money to, to make better things out of their so life. So the, the um, individuals, like you give them we money give groups, or groups? We give groups. We give formal and informal groups. And that connects to the second bit of our work. Okay. Because we do not just give money in isolation, we because we think about power, because we are about building a movement, mm -hmm. we believe that the way change happens is when girls are empowered to come together and use their collective power to challenge the system. So we organize power. That's how we think about it. Oh. So bringing groups of girls together, we provide a lot of support to mentors. We do a lot of training. Oh. We build what we call a radical political education curriculum, a feminist education curriculum. Mm -hmm. We're not neutral. At Purposeful, the thing that we're very proud of is we never not take a side. We're actively against FGM. We do not fund anything. Okay. We're for human rights. We're for, like, we, we are not a neutral organization. That's uh -huh. why our first word, we say we are feminists. It's the first thing about us at Purposeful. Okay. So we are also about organizing power. We're also about transforming power. And how we do that is about policy work. So okay. as you know, the government of Sierra Leone uh, banned, for example, pregnant girls from going to school. We led that campaign to say, this is nonsense. We took a stand. We took the government to court. We partnered with other people. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of work. We pressured them here and, and, and helped the government to um, um, reverse the ban. And now we're also leading in the process of rewriting a new policy, the radical inclusion policy the Minister of Education is championing. Mm -hmm. Purposeful has been helping to write that policy. So it's an example of the work we do. So everything we do is about thinking through all the ways that a society needs to change so that girls can live in their full power. power okay. So that girls can be fully free. They can be human beings here with access to resources. That's why money is important. Yes. Bringing them together, mm -hmm. having them access to allies, and then changing the policy um, landscape as well so that girls can be free. All right, cool. But you mentioned the, the um, campaign about the pregnant women, mm -hmm. right? You know, it was a lot of 
you already know. Backlash, yes. Right. Um, why personally do you think it's a good idea? Don't you feel like you that means you're encouraging girls to get pregnant? No. Okay. Because nobody has seen a pregnant girl and thought, I want to get pregnant. Nobody has ever seen a pregnant woman in the history of the world and said, oh, it's a flag with Gebele. That's absolute bullshit. Um, um, probably you don't um, use no, this fine, words yeah. on your show. <laughs> but it's absolutely wrong. It, it doesn't happen. We look at the evidence. Two things you have to keep in mind on this issue. Mm -hmm. One is you have to understand what leads to these pregnancies. Okay. If you say a girl who is under 18 mm -hmm. cannot give consent. So if she's pregnant, somebody has violated her right. Yeah. She, that means that sexual relationship right there is a failure of all of us. It's society's responsibility to protect girls. It's yeah. very important. Mm -hmm. So A, less than 10% of the people who violate girls' rights are even punished. And yet... Education is a right. Mm -hmm. It's a fundamental right. Now, you should have access to education irrespective of what happens. So if we say, hey, these girls are victims. They've been violated. Why are we taking away the one thing that the evidence says will help them to take care of their kid? I just said, if, if your parent is educated, your mom, it changes your life trajectory. Mm -hmm. So our position was and remains you cannot be a society where, f by age 19 in Sierra Leone, 45% of girls will have already had one pregnancy. Yeah. A massive number. We can't afford to kick them all out of school. True. Who's going to be left? We have to find a way to say, how do we get as many of you girls into the school system so you don't drop off? Of course, we're not for girls to get pregnant and the entire part of our work we understand that pregnancy is a reflection of the patriarchy mm -hmm. it's abuse it's actually a, a a symbol of abuse of girls rights because it's typically from rape from transactional sex from teachers or cadre riders who are trying to take away girls right, but what bodies. about the girls that just like the boys and just think okay if i get pregnant by this guy you know he's going to keep me what about those so you can't really say most of them no, is but just... Majority, majority of, okay. of that. Mm -hmm. And even in the case where girls say, oh, you know, I want to I wanna have sex, I want to get pregnant, mm -hmm. we still believe that that's not enough. Again, education is a right. It's like right. having food. You do not deprive so your child from having from... food f at home. Right. And it's, in the girl, it's not only in the girl's interest to have education, it's in all of our interests. So let's even say this girl wants to have 15 kids by the time she finishes university. She should be able to go she back She should to be school. able to go back because if she is in school, you and I's lives are better. True. We'll have more nurses in our community. The community will be better. Their kids will be better. They'll have access to health care. So it's not in anybody's interest mm -hmm. to punish a girl by taking her. And most of the concerns that people had, mm -hmm. and if you think about it, A, this notion that the pregnancy is going to jump from one person to another it's not true no it's many not. studies show that actually having pregnant girls in school reduces pregnancy because other girls see it and, and it's, they don't want it's to be actually them. a disincentive it's not and the way you reduce pregnancy is to talk about sex is to actually talk about sex education mm -hmm. most people want to have sex we all enjoy having sex of course mm -hmm. but you can do it in a safe way true right yeah but our school system, we tabooize sex. And for most girls, the first time they have sex, boom, they are pregnant. So is that part of the agenda where we're exactly. going back to sex education? Comprehensive sex education. This okay. government, to their credit, has embraced that and they're writing. In fact, today I see the minister just unveiled a new curriculum that a critical part of that includes comprehensive sex education. Cool. So that's something that's really going to be big. And this radical inclusion policy that we're working on also really focuses on things like that. And that will begin to change the way we approach this issue. Because frankly, Ellen, we cannot keep 45% of our girls in this country out of school. No, we cannot. We will all suffer. We'll be poor. Okay, yeah, and you hate poverty. I do too. Oh, man, I hate poverty. <laughs> However, you know, um, you know I've understood um, the, the, the girls' part. But at any point, are you ever thinking about including boys? Yes, okay. we do. We do. In fact, a lot of our programs, just today I was... Um, having a session with my colleagues, mm -hmm. and, and we talked about boys. Now, the reason why we do not start with boys mm -hmm. is because boys, relative to girls, are already in a position of privilege and power. Okay. 
And when people say include, I'm a program person. I run an NGO, mm -hmm. I've managed programs across countries. Include is not neutral. It's like somebody telling you, oh, why not include this in your program? It's not neutral, it's money. Okay. Anything you include, includes money. It's money, right? <laughs> if you, oh, you should do this segment. Imagine doing a Vox Pop. You will be adding a staff. You need to go to the field. It's additional. So whenever people say include, they mean I should spend, we should spend our money mm -hmm. on something. So when people say that, I like to remind them that you're asking us to move money away from girls to spend it on boys. And for us at Purposeful, we want almost all the money we spend to, go to, girls. to be on girls. Because okay. it's a political statement. Girls are worth it. Because if you look at any analysis of public spending, girls receive the smallest part of all public spending full stop. Education, health, emergencies, girls are getting the least of the pie. If it's trickling down, it reaches the chief the members of the family, mm -hmm, he goes to the mm -hmm, home, he gets mm -hmm. to the boy before he gets to the girl. So our ambition is to try to correct that. So that's why we focus on girls, for people to understand. Okay. But how do we reach boys? We have to ask ourselves, at what cost should we spend for the change to happen in girls' lives? So when we do boys, do boys as in do programs mm -hmm. that target boys, we do not judge our success on the changes the program makes in the lives of the boys. Mm -hmm. We judge our success on the changes the program makes in the lives of the, the girls. girls. Okay. So we ask ourselves, which boys? So let's say I want to, you know, let's say currently we're doing a program in Falaba with girls who are out of school. Most of them are already, they have babies or they are married. So we will do community conversations with their husbands. But the goal is not to change the husband's lives. It's about Thank you. Girl. It's about okay. their wives. Okay. So we say, okay, how do we design a program that lets them rethink their relationship with their wives? And when we do our analysis at the end, I'm sorry, many programs already reach boys. For us at Purposeful, we think girls are worth it. That's where our focus is. And cool. All right. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back after this. Let's watch the real talk with Eileen TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with Eileen TV show catches every week on AYB TV, FTN, Afri Radio, and 98.1. Also, download my app if you're an Android user. Don't forget to follow me on social media. Um, real Talk with Eileen, all the handles. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have this new segment for the season. It's called Celeb Spies. You want to know what they're doing? Check it out. Hello. Fine, thank you. Come, who can see? Come on. Yes. Uh, I don't see anything bad. This is from Real Talk with Elin, TV show. Um, we can't see if we can get a surprise visit. A surprise visit. And all you worry, we show the do not sell spice because in a celebrity, so now make today I forget one on one interaction with them. No, I don't see anything bad. It's just a cool something. Alright, okay. Thank you. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, this is a real talk with Elin. And of course, we do sell you spice. We, you don't know where they come. One or twice, we're not able to get you. Oh, oh. Ah, okay. Hold on, guys. Let me come. Okay. Okay. So this is not deep in the bag. Okay. You can dip into this bag and take a very nice gift we'll get for you. The last I see, I see Maurice ride keke. 
I hope Semiyong will be good, man. But Semiyong will be nice than Mauricio, you know? <laughs> you afraid? Don't worry. I cook something. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. You will be doing house cleaning, mobbing the floor like, what the fuck? No, nice. Very nice gift, no, so. I don't know when last I do that, like 15 to 20 years ago. Really? Like, I don't understand. I for can't clean, bing, 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 So bing. go do and back for it, you know, we see. So, so for clean, I don't understand. Yes. Now you can be sitting yours. Inside or outside or... Any side, as long as they clean for we. Like yours. Okay, cool. So you just choose the right part for clean. Fucking <laughs> Okay. I don't look for CBMO. No, no, okay, no more. I did observe last year, I did clean. <laughs> This year, 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 If I say fair come clean all side. Clean all side, elephants then see. For seeing a my way work. We all talk! Now we, now we. I believe. I know how this is, I know see. You work. Lots of guys are fans though. I can clean. <laughs> I can do this, trust me, I can do this. Imagine I don't take a for just... I hope so no more the place they clean. This a year of jubilation, double double promotion. This a year now you hear we all go make them congratulations. Put you in a dancing shoe, let we like the daddy, gladly in jubilation. This year, this year, better go follow me. As you know, you are not in fancy, they expect a lot from you right now. Come on. I'm telling you, not to call a musician or artist, but the cleaners as well. Make you head spin like a magic shan. Yeah. Full up the pulse like a magic shan. Yeah. I go change your life like a magic shan. Yeah. Magic shan. Yeah. Magic shan. Yeah. Make you head spin like a magic shan. Yeah. Full up the pulse like a magic shan. Yeah. I go change your life like a magic shan. I get the man and yeah. I get the man and yeah. Baby, I get the man and yeah. I get the man and yeah. Baby, if you can near me, 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 baby, if you allow me. Baby, if you come near me, 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 baby, if you allow me, if you come near me, you know go wherever ever left me go. Go change your life like a magic shan, like a magic shan, like a magic shan, like a magic shan. I carry money like a magic shan, like a magic shan, like a magic shan. So come on, let's go ahead and things. I go and let ask you two, three questions. Welcome. Um, you think say you want to make it do the housework then? And because you're illiterate or because you're not getting anything for do? I made it choose a kind of job day. Sometimes it all depends. Some job may be possible, you know, just because of the other option. You understand the situation with them? Mm-hmm. Like, mm -hmm. 
Honestly, to me, you are not fit to see anybody who lack for do such job. The gani? Duam, like if in a house you feel like okay, yeah, cleaning your house for they keep you home clean and all, but like for the duam, for survival. So you get any word of encouragement to the people in the any word of courage to the we want to give them outside there? Well, at the end of the day, everybody just for just believe say the situation we got put you for that particular moment, you just have to accept it. Okay. And also, most of them not to them wish. Yeah. But then they don't because of the one put food at the table. Probably some of them get them picking them to take care of. And therefore, make sure say they give them picking them the life. We then not be opportune for kids like put them good school, make them educate. At the end of the day, then picking them up with the waiting, then they do. Mm -hmm. You understand? So at the end of the day, it's better if not this way you get for not this you get for do for you survive, for you put you picking at school, for you cook every day. You understand? It's better you do and than you go do something odd. We go end up on a jail or do whatever. Sorry. Okay, so one last one. I just want to talk to the boss them or the people who say where they can maltreat the workers and then at the house there. I just want to talk to them directly. Well, to me, I advise them that if somebody they do such kind of work in your house, to me not to wish. Understand? So um, even if na be you, you na the person that we you will get the house, but they do this kind of job. If they treat you and carry, you don't go happy. So, so me, I feel like we say, okay, then people are with really do them kind of job here. Yeah, they treat them very, very well. Make you let them be part of your family. It's kids are like how they treat you. Your sister, it's kids are like how they treat your brother, it's kids are like how they treat you. Be keen on because and they keep you home like a in the sun. Because honestly, to me, it's like a house clean sometimes. Means a lot. Okay, so last before you continue, I'll see cleaning. No, I need to continue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no okay, so send shout out. Today, go and send shout out to. <laughs> ah, I just want to say shout out to me, myself, and okay. doing this to me, it, it feels good because I think they don't say one. Honestly, they don't say I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't know how many years. They don't say all the time, I know for a week, in the morning. Rush up, fresh up, if I get anything for what you do. And go out. I get to play video game, I play video game, play scene music. Or if I get meetings, business meetings, I attend. You know, like, I get one or two of me, guys, and they create a house with me. So, you know, they call them to go on. And as I say earlier, maybe they consider them part of me, like, my family. So, normally, I don't even know all that stuff. Okay, come on, okay. So we glad you forget you here today and thank you for the hard work. <laughs> well, as the program is gonna so the cows for nice things. <laughs> no <laughs> Of course. No, the next thing is going to be no cool than this. Okay. So in case you miss this episode, go to the YouTube channel and search for We Talk <laughs> with Ellen TV show. And of course, download we app na Google Play Store. We talk with Ellen. See you next week. Bye-bye. Me and the presenter for today, Josephine Tula. <laughs> I did not make them do it, I swear to God. Siba did that. Now in faults, now make these, now make you celebrity do all these crazy I, things. I wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's right here. He did that, not me. Please, I beg. But anyways, welcome back to Real Talk Show. Um, of course, if you just walked in, I have um Chernoba, who's the CEO for Purposeful, um, an organization that deals with girls, strictly girls. He's a feminist activist, and he's not even joking about it. Like he's very serious. <laughs> you wouldn't even understand. He's very serious. But anyways, um, welcome back. Um, we were talking about funding, you know, um, earlier. Basically, what you're saying is, I did not know that part, to say, this is the headquarter, and mm -hmm. you actually do help globally. Yes. That's good. Sierra Leone, we're on top of the world, at least. Yeah. It's something where we're mm -hmm. really headlining. Yeah. Um, I want to know. 
Where do you get your funding from? Ah. <laughs> it's always the, the magic question. Yes. We've been very blessed. We have, um, you know, I like to say to people, ideas lead, money follow. Uh, mm -hmm. There's still a lot of money in the world. We get most of our funding from independent um, donors okay. in the West. Mm -hmm. our, our, we've received funding in the past from independent donors like the Novo Foundation, which is one of the largest non-profit funders, especially in our sector. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of our seed, fo seed funding from them. We've also received money from the private, from the pri private sector, from groups like Nike, uh, as an institution, mm -hmm. we've received money in the early days from Malala Fund, uh, from the UN. We have received some resources. In fact, recently during COVID, we've been able to mobilize over 20 international donors oh, for our cool. resilience fund that we use to fund around the world. Mm -hmm. In Sierra Leone, one of our biggest donors is uh, what is now called FCDO, which used to be DFID, the British government. Mm -hmm. They fund one of our big programs, which is providing uh, safe spaces uh, for girls across seven um, across seven districts in, in Sierra Leone. So okay. we have a UK aid to thank for that. Um, yeah, so we have a, a, a very diverse pool of resources, mostly from um, Western donors around the world, yeah. Oh, cool. So how much, of, how much of that is going to your pocket? And how much of that are you really <laughs> spending? <laughs> the, the, the thing, being feminist also invites you to, um, requires you to live your life with a certain level of integrity. Okay. Because I understand that being in this field, I draw a lot of attention in the work we do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm very, very proud of, and I invite anybody <laughs> to come look, is I'm not corrupt. I'm paid very well. Okay. Um, because I do a good job. Um, so I don't have to be corrupt and and with all the money that we give out I think since we started purposeful over three years ago I think we've raised I want to say but well over I want to hear it no, I, I, think want, I want I the think we've probably mob mobilized closer to 20 million dollars in in the three years that we've been in okay. in, in existence oh really um, for our work here and around the world okay. uh, something we're very 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 proud of but we see we're, we're basically custodians of that money it's not our money mm -hmm. and the reason why we attract more money is because we're not corrupt because donors are not used to a Sierra Leone based organization competing for this amount of money and doing it and they come and look at our and books and everything's like we've got structure we organize I mean, nobody in this country mm -hmm. will tell you, and this is the challenge I'll say to national TV, mm -hmm. nobody will say I've ever paid them a bribe and nobody will say they've ever given me 10 cents. Not possible. I'm not corrupt. Nobody can You're corrupt. You're not. No. But most of these corrupt agencies do have everything planned oh, out. Oh, they do, but not you us. Know what I'm saying? And that's why, we be, that's why we say we're here to beat them and we're here to, to kick them out of the space because the thing that we are very proud of our purposeful not just me by the way because purposeful i don't know if you know this but about 90 percent of our staff are female my co-founder is a female and pretty much everybody that works at our office from the driver to the security all women top top women in their fields and together we have that commitment to integrity so we're not corrupt and we try to do everything with absolute excellence and you're paid very well we're paid very well uh, i'm 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 very proud of that i'm also salary I cannot tell you. <laughs> I know you weren't gonna say. I no, just tried anyways. I but I know he's nice, very well. Ni nice try. <laughs> Listen, I'm paid enough. I'm content. Where you're good. I'm, I'm content. You don't have to tap in that money to yes. do anything for personal reasons. No, I don't need to, and I don't even see the money. There's a system. There's a structure. Okay. I can never go. Like, <laughs> I was the other day. I was saying to somebody, like. How do I go to my accountant and be like, oh, you know that money for that project? I need you to put it in my private account. Like, I don't, I don't understand how people do it, but that's how not they the do relationship between they, me they, and my they, accountant. They, they come up with all these invoices and yeah. all these things and stuff like that. We know how it works. However, I, I, I'm happy you are not. I just had to point that out because a lot of agencies are corrupt. Yes. Um, we have, in know, fact, that's why I told you we're, yeah. we exist because of the critique of the system. Exactly. We are aware that big agencies massively yeah. corrupt and yeah and people the people who are supposed to benefit from it don't benefit correct too. you know what i mean and and it's not cool at all so that's really really good um keep it up thank you um so for purposeful um an organization for example you, you mentioned earlier it has to um the mentor or the founder has to be under 30. the um, organizations we fund yes the fund so what are some of those qualifications you mentioned that you don't support 
um, certain things, yes. but you support. Yeah. So for one, if somebody's watching right now has an organization, all girls and things like that, what's another requirement to be a part of Purposeful? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. We're launching our new global fund. We're going to put all our, our funding under one portfolio. It's called the Wheaton for Girls Fund. Mm -hmm. And that fund is going to be open-ended. We okay. will not even have any more deadline or stuff. If you have an idea, you apply. Okay. The only thing we're looking for are feminist values. You don't have to be a feminist. You have to be committed and open-minded to be feminist. Okay. You cannot be anti-girls and, and come to and us for support. Mm -hmm. We want to fund girls, girls groups. You don't have to be registered. We also fund unregistered informal groups. You just have to have an idea. Ideas lead money. What, what, what we don't fund are male-led organizations or organizations without significant female leadership. If you say, oh yeah, we have women, but the woman is the vice president, the woman is the treasurer, so you have to go somewhere else. It's not purposeful. We want to see the woman as a CEO or majority of your leadership, mm -hmm. your board are females, and they are young. And that's also very important because we want to uh, ambition. So yeah, because you said 30 for, and under. So 30, you're trying to say, 30 and I'm, under, yo, I'm over 40. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not qualified? Are you We're, serious? Well, we, we will have an allies fund for people like you. Oh, who cool. are allies of girls, oh, who I support like girls, we'll have that as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. We don't fund government. If you're a government, we don't fund you directly at all. Okay. We do not fund religious groups, I'm sorry. We, we're, we're non-religious, so okay. we, not have, we do not have anything against uh, religion, but we do not fund religious groups. We do not fund groups that are pro-FGM. Okay. We're very, very clear on that. That's the only qual thing, the only issue that all we right. take an affirmative position on. Because we believe FGM is part of the culture of sexual abuse against fem um, females in this country. So, so we that's don't a fund. No, no. Yeah, if you say, oh, we, we support Bundo, we got. No, that's right. not us. We don't fund you. But other than that, come up with the ideas. And what we want to be doing now going forward is we want the ideas to lead us. So okay. we get 10 different proposals on girls organizing around the climate and things like that. And we'll create a climate fund. We fund it. Okay. We get, so we want to really support this idea of a feminist movement organically, both in Sierra Leone and around the world. All right, cool. Don't go anywhere. Chernobyl is here, and I'm here. We're almost at the end of the show, and I'll be right back after this. Let's watch the real talk with Eline TV show by our very own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eline Kistar. Welcome back to Real Talk with the Lean TV show. Catch us every week on AYV, FTN, Afri Radio, and 98.1. We've just walked in. I have Cherno Ba. Can you keep up? <laughs> he's here in the building, of course. He's a feminist <laughs> activist, and he's the CEO of Purposeful. Um, if you miss all of that, watch a repeat and follow me on social media. You get to see it and how you can benefit from Purposeful. Welcome back. Thank you. All right, cool. I'm enjoying all of this. I, I like too. the fact that you mentioned the Ally Fund. The Ally <laughs> Fund, you know, where we can benefit. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's not just about under 30 for, yes. for we the old one. Day. It's okay. But um, so far, are you proud of yourself? Um... I, I like to think about that question more around, is my mom proud of me? Oh, I'm and sure, I, I'm sure and she I, is. And I, and I, I think <laughs> she is. I think she is. So it's more around the, the, the target I set for myself. I remember when I was in, when I was in college, mm -hmm. I had this big poster at Fabe College up on top of my head. Mm -hmm. And, and the, one of the thing it said at the top was, do not do anything that your mother will not be proud of. Oh. And so that's kind of what I keep thinking every day as I do my work. And I, I think my mom is, is proud. She's a retired teacher now, but I think okay. she's, she probably thinks I'm not doing that bad in yeah, general. She is proud. How yes. often do you see her? Because oh, now you're getting her talking oh, to her on the often. phone. In fact, I moved <laughs> back to Sierra Leone. You know, I was living in the US for, mm -hmm. for quite a while. I moved back to Sierra Leone three years ago with my family, my wife who I met in New York. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons we moved back was so that I can be close to my mom. Um, Mama's boy. I am a proud <laughs> cat carrying member of the Mama's Boy. <laughs> I am yeah. a, I'm definitely Mama's boy and I'm very proud of that. Okay. So purposeful, um, are you achieving all your goals? Uh, until every girl is free in this country, until every girl and around the world, and until every girl can live in her full power, not be subjected to sexual violence and abuse and rape, mm -hmm. drop, be forced to drop out of school, 
are forced into marriage when they're not ready mm -hmm. or have a child when she's not ready or being subjected to female genital mutilation and courting. Okay. Until all of those things happen, where girls can live in their full power, where we have a female president in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. and it's not news. It's not just that we have a female president. Okay. That we get normalized to that. Okay. Then we're not fulfilling our goals. Okay. But are we on our way to doing it? You bet we are. We think we're, we're setting, laying the foundation by working with girls, by supporting girls, by investing in radical feminist political education, building a groundswell of feminist support of not just us, but our allies. We think that's what's going to lead to what we need, which is to overthrow this patriarchal system. All right, cool. So let me get to Siba. We've, we've talked about purposeful, being the CEO. You've explained all these nice things, which is good. Siba on social media. Yes. <laughs> I don't even want to ask about your affiliation, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, but I see your post. Yeah. You don't play with the government. Uh, I mean, you're always there. And for somebody who's close to even the <laughs> Minister of Education. I'm close to many people in government from right. the top throughout. I, you know, I sit there and I'm like, go see my yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it, it shows you are for the country. Yes. You don't joke about it. You know what I mean? Where does that drive come from? Like... No, I, you know, I think if you don't start, I think it was Martin Luther King who said, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for, for anything. anything yeah. You have to stand for something. Uh, look, I'm a supporter of the government. One of the reasons I thought it was okay to come back to Sierra Leone is because I actually believe that the new direction of governments will help to make this country a better place. And so you are, uh, an American president said that the highest form of patriotism is dissent. Okay. The ability to disagree with you with respect. I love you, but you're not always going to do everything that's right. And on principle, I should be able to disagree with you while you know that I still love you. If I'm going to vote tomorrow, yes, I'll vote for Madabio again. Um, if, it's a, if it's a contest between Madabio and, and, and the APC in the next election. And frankly, it's because of education. I think free education is the singular best thing that's happened in the history of this country. Okay. Because everything I have said, the problem is education until we change that systemically. But do I believe that SLPP is perfect, that everything that they do is right? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Do I think I owe them my opinion to tell them the truth, to help make them better, in my opinion? Absolutely, yes. And I think that's what our society needs to get to. That, Ellen, you know that I, I love you, but that but you I, know that I can also criticize you. And it does not come from a place of hurt. It does not come from, oh, because I'm, you know, undermining you. No, but it comes from a place of we can all be better. And I want you to do the same to me. I've been wrong as well on social media and oh boy, people have come <laughs> after me. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think being an enlightened person ought to be. And my ambition is for our society to be enlightened. So I don't make, you know, during the last election, I wrote a big endorsement piece. I supported Madabio and I'm very proud of that. Right, but so is that I why don't you think feel it's like, perfect. I wouldn't really say you're getting away with it. Um, however, um, is that why you feel like you can just talk freely because you did support them? Versus somebody who's opposition, because it's more like if somebody, you know, is, you know, for the APC and they write such things, it's, no matter how you see it, I've got the opposition. That's the thing with Sierra Leone. Well, let me say something. So with you, mm -hmm. you, you know, I, sometimes I feel like, okay, he might be getting away with it. That's why he's talking. No, no, no. So <laughs> where there, but there's two things, though. Okay. There's another Chernobyl. That writes. No, I'm not talking about that. One. I'm talking about Siba. I'm not even okay. friends with that. I don't even because know that, that other one. one writes some really caustic things. Oh, no, I'm not Me, interested in that. <laughs> I focus on issues. Okay. So I get away with, for example, it really always irks me when they don't have any semblance of gender equity in appointments, mm -hmm. in things that the government does. So sometimes, for example, Corona coordinators, 15 names, just one woman. Like, are we in the stone age? Where are we? Come on, we need to come back, you know? Right. Like, my point is we cannot allow that to be normalized. Right. We cannot allow young girls to wake up tomorrow morning and see that it's okay that 14 leaders are men and it's okay. And, it, and it's up to us, those of us who are feminists, who believe in this. Yeah. And I think why I get away with it, mm -hmm. because I, I never throw bombs, but I critique based on principles. They know where I stand. I'm for education. I'm a feminist. Right. I'm for girls and women. And on those issues, I'm for human rights and justice. Sometimes too, there are human rights and justice issues mm -hmm. that I think, you know, look, we are better than this. And I know that 
as well, the president, mm -hmm. I believe, is committed to these values. I think he has shown that he's committed to these values. But, again, I'm a, I'm a history of American politics. Okay. And I think it was uh, President Johnson who met with activists and he said, I agree with you, now go make me do it. What that means is President Bio can agree with us. But we need to be out there as well sometimes. Mm -hmm. Show him that we can mobilize support that actually this position is politically safe because he's ultimately a politician. Right. So pregnant girls ban. So many people said, oh, if they do it, everybody will be against it. They will lose all support. No. Our job is to mobilize support so President Bill can see actually a lot of people, people. Right. are for this issue. So we can push them. In that way, I think we're helping as part of the government. Right. And process. you're making a difference and they're listening. Right. We hope so. I think, to be honest, though, one other thing I should give the president credit for mm -hmm. is he's demonstrated that he can listen on a lot of things. Right. We go on air. We and another thing I complain about all the time is about speaking uh, Creole. Um, <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm an avid believer okay. that we need to make Creole a national language. That we should stop this obsession with English. English. Yeah. Um, because. I look at the data, 70% of our population cannot understand English. They cannot <laughs> read and write. So if you're having a national conversation all the time, it should be in Korea. And in an emergency, and you speak plenty English, people, look, some people say, oh, it's because you don't know how to speak English. I'm like, actually, I got one of the best English results every time I've taken English. You've had me speak. I speak pretty good English. I've been all around the world. My English is pretty good. But it's not about me. It's about, it's about how do we reach the last person. A language, again, can be a massive barrier for so many people. Uh -huh. So I criticize that as well sometimes. So those are my issue-based criticisms. And, and, and I'm happy I live in a country where it's okay to do that. You're not worried that someone's going to come knock on your door tomorrow morning tomorrow, yeah. and you lock just... you up. And as you said, they just uh, recently made it easy you, for you, you to do that as well. That's it. I'm just not kidding. Even um, you can get away with it now because as oh, a journalist, I can say whatever too, I want to, I can say whatever you I want to say. I choose to, not to. Yes. Because, you know, I want to do a lot. But, yeah, <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm not talking. Oh, I, I know you. Start. I will start. Oh, know, they know. I know you too. <laughs> so, um, with all these achievements, with all this traveling, because you're, you know, you out and about most of the time. See, but one in the office, I'm in New York. See, but... <laughs> You know, and you have a family. Of course, you have a beautiful wife and you have yeah. your kids. Yeah. What do you do for fun? Ooh. <laughs> um, nobody knows me and do not know my wife. I'm, I'm a very, very lucky man. I'm in love with my wife. Um, she's my partner. Okay. We are intellectual partners. I like to say she's even more educated than me. <laughs> and I'm very lucky. I, I married up. I feel like I... I look up to her mm -hmm. um, as a peer and as a mentor. And we raise our kids together. Okay. When we had our boy, um, she went back to work and I stayed home for six months, oh. taking care of the kid. Mm -hmm. um, and, and up to date, I tell you, when, my, when our son wakes up at night, if he needs something, he comes to me, he doesn't go to his mom because he's socialized to that. So I like to tell men who are out there that it's not biology. It's not like, oh, just because, because I don't know. I, yeah. yeah, no, no, that's, mm -hmm. it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It's because we socialize people in that way. Mm -hmm. So as a family, we have a lot of fun times together. Like typically after work, I go back home. I spend a lot of time with my wife. Together, we watch shows together. Okay. Over weekend, we love the beach. We're always at Burea Beach. Even this weekend, we're at Burea Beach. Uh, we love going out for ice cream. We love dancing. Both of us love to dance. And so we love going out to dance. And for me, the thing that makes me probably the happiest in this world is when I'm on a football pitch playing football, soccer. So really? I love to play ball. And I play every you, week. Every week. Every week that I play. Really? I'm actually a pretty good footballer. And I, I surprise <laughs> a lot of people every time. I've won um, best player high school score trophies many times really? in school competitions. But people don't know because they see me. Side, if I between, no, 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 I'm not that level. <laughs> not that level. But in school, <laughs> I played, I played uh, for my school. When I went to university, I played for my hall. When I went to the US, I won MVP playing in grad school. Oh, nice. So I play, I play pretty well. People don't, people, a lot of people are surprised by that. But I'm, I am. I'm pretty okay in, in, the, in the pitch, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for honoring my invitation. Um, I just wanted people to know a lot more about um, Chernobyl.
Lisa, you, can you, you keep up? You tell me to jump, I'll just ask you how. I'm, <laughs> I'm a big fan of everything you are and oh, what you do. Thank you. And thank you for really, um, you know, shining so much positive light in our society. So thank you for that. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? But next, I'll be money business now for <laughs> next. Um, but nobody leaves my set without getting Ooh. a really, really nice, cool, cool, cool gift from me. I want to say thank you again. Oh. From me to you with love from the Real Talk Show. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to your really lovely crew. You guys are awesome. All right. I don't want to go, but I got to go. I've been your host today, Elinki. So till next week. Bye.